Like it or loathe it, autonomous vehicle technology is coming, be it in the form of fully autonomous capabilities for your own car or self-driving pods that you can hail in the same way that you can hail a taxi cab today, we're on the cusp of autonomous vehicles becoming the norm rather than the exception. And as part of that transition process, we're starting to see more advanced driver assistance features coming to market in production vehicles that, either through their name or through their apparent capabilities, give the driver the illusion that the car is completely autonomous. And while they may not be technically classed as semi-autonomous, many are just classed as advanced driver assistance systems, I'm going to refer to them all as semi-autonomous for the purposes of this video. Tesla's Autopilot, GM Supercruise and Nissan's ProPilot are just a few examples of such systems. To someone trying them for the very first time, they are capable enough to make you think they are fully autonomous systems. They've reached the uncanny valley of driving capabilities. And in a world where fully autonomous vehicles are being tested and developed like Waymo's Level 5 Robo Taxis and GM's Steering Wheel Free Cruise Bolt EVs, it's easy to fall into a false sense of security with these systems. And it's that very same false sense of security which leads to distracted drivers and ultimately accidents. You only have to watch the in-car video from the recent fatal accident in Arizona to see that the person behind the wheel did not have their eyes on the road at all times. And consequentially, they were looking down when they could have potentially spotted the cyclist. As it was, they didn't see them until it was too late. Which brings me to the topic of today's video, how you, everyday car drivers, can help develop and advance the age of autonomous vehicles. In short, you need to pay more attention to the advanced driver assistant technologies being used today, pay more attention to the road ahead, and supervise your car's semi-autonomous system perhaps in the same way that you would for any other driver, like a learner driver, even a good one. Look, I'm not saying for a second that autonomous or semi-autonomous systems are learner drivers. In fact, far from it. In most situations, even now, they're more capable than most of us. But until we're told by automakers that the cars they're building really can operate in complete hands-off, attention-free mode, we need to follow the recommendations on how to use the various technologies currently in our vehicles. If we don't, it leads to accidents like the ones we've witnessed in the last few weeks, and those accidents in turn will slow down both regulatory and engineering progression towards a fully autonomous automotive future. You see, while it's generally accepted that systems like Tesla Autopilot and Nissan ProPilot can dramatically reduce the number of accidents, they aren't yet at a point where you can protect you or every other road users in every single situation. This was illustrated to me recently when behind the wheel of an Autopilot engaged Tesla. The owner, who was with me, noted that I needed to probably take over control of the car to pass someone running towards our vehicle at the side of the road, and sure enough, the car didn't seem to detect the person. I took over, and there was nothing to worry about. The rest of the time, the system was very competent, even handling tight corners on a winding road. And while some of its lane positioning had me nervous, we were safe. But had I not been paying attention to that runner, well, it might have been a very different story. It's not just Tesla systems either. I've seen other vehicles with semi-autonomous systems that have reacted weirdly to road markings and other road users. Reactions which are just fine if the driver is alert and paying attention to the road, but absolutely terrifying if they're not. Need more proof? The Netherlands Vehicle Authority, or RDW, recently carried out a series of investigations into various advanced driver assistance systems and noted that cars fitted with adaptive cruise control and other semi-autonomous systems did not always notice a motorcyclist ahead of them on the road. If the motorcyclist was riding defensively with a middle-of-the-lane position, everything seems to work most of the time. But when the rider was nearer to the edge of the lane, the system's didn't always detect them. The same was true of motorcycles positioned in certain locations around the car, as they might be when changing lanes or merging on a busy motorway. While you might not think about it, some semi-autonomous driving systems, especially those without LiDAR, do sometimes have the computer equivalent of blind spots, where detecting small objects like motorcycles and bicycles is hard. 
As several other commentators, such as Andy Greaser of Ravzilla, have noted, cars with semi-autonomous driver assistance systems print clear warnings in owner's manuals about the limitations of their car's systems. Some, like Volvo, even go to lengths to note that their systems may not detect cyclists or motorcyclists. But when was the last time you read the owner's manual? Go on, be honest. <laughs> Thought not. And therein lies the rub. We've all been allowing ourselves to be lulled into a false sense of security, me included, when it comes to semi-autonomous vehicle operation. We allow our attention to wander, and that's when things can go wrong if your car gets confused, loses its lane markings, or suffers a sudden blindness in its camera systems as the sun blazes down on a nice spring day. If we don't, then we could be the ones slowing down the progression to fully autonomous vehicles, if only because some systems, like the Tesla Autopilot system, learns from its mistakes and our intervention. Without that, and accidents instead, we just delay the progression of self-driving cars. And those of us on two wheels, well, we need to be extra mindful of where we are on the road to make sure that drivers and the autonomous systems in our cars today can see as much of us as much as possible. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to this channel. And be sure to check out our new channel, Transport Evolved Take Two. It's a little more behind the scenes stuff and a few more hangouts. And of course, if you'd like to help this channel keep going, please consider supporting us through Patreon. Or if you like, you can send us Bitcoins using the link below. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>